praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We've already prayed. And she said that she's first made it, uh, lesson series is two. Uh, God is our refuge, lesson 2.2. 2. Our title is Bless the Lord at All Times. Hallelujah. And our focus verse will be coming from Psalms 30, 34, verses. Um, our focus verse is Psalms 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And our lesson text will be coming from 1 Samuel 21, verses 10 through 15, chapter 22, verses 1 through 5, and Psalms 34, verses 1 through 22. And we're going to pick up in Psalms 34, beginning at verse 11, since um, the prophetess had already read 1 through 10. The truth about our God is, God is worthy of praise in every situation. My God. Hallelujah. If you have need of a um, material, please raise your hand and the ushers will get, a, get the material for you. Amen. We're going to begin with 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 through 15. 1 Samuel 21, verses 10 through 15. And it reads, And David and Rosa fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servant of uh, Achish said unto him, is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him and dance and sing? Saul has slain his thousand and David his ten thousand. And David laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid of Achish the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle, of, his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servant, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of a madman, that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? First Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 through 5, and it reads, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brother and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. And David went thence to Mizpeth of Moab. And he said unto the king of Moab, let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you until I know what God would do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the home. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the home, depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Herod. Psalms 34, we're going to begin, it is 1 through uh, 24, 1 through 22, but we're going to get, begin reading at verse 11, since 1 through 10 has already been read tonight. Begin at verse 11, say, Come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking God. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and deliver them out of all of their trouble. The Lord is not to them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the affliction of the righteous, yeah. but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Yeah. He keepeth all of his bones, not one of them is broken. He will shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Amen. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Hallelujah. 
Yes, Amen. Lord. Thank God for the reading. You may take your seats. Amen. Lesson again is bless the Lord at all times. The big idea, I will bless the Lord at all times. Now, focus verse is Psalms 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God is worthy of all the praise in every situation. Yes, yes, yes Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. For God be the glory. Yes. Glory, glory. So I would like to lay a foundation for the lesson for tonight so we have understanding, um, like, who wrote Psalm 34 and, um, how David was really appointed and how he ended up in the cave. And I want to encourage us on tonight that we need to be in the right position to bless the Lord at all times so that we can receive all of his benefits. And sometimes we can allow the enemy to come in and stop us from blessing the Lord at all times. And as we know, um, Israel was God's chosen people However, Israel looked across the fence and saw how everybody else was living. Everybody else had a king, and so they wanted a king. And the prophet warned them of what uh, a king would do for them. But they insisted on having um, a king like the other nations. So God granted their request, and Saul was the first king. He was 30 years old when he began his reign. His first battle that he won it was against the Philistines. And since he won that battle, the Philistines hated the Israelites even the more. But the later the tide had changed. Now we're going to talk about, uh, I want us to uh, get a grasp as to um, how uh, Saul, Saul lost his kingship. Amen? And how David just went on in. Amen? Obedience is better than sacrifice. But anyway, if we go on, later the tide had changed, and the Philistines had cornered the Israelites, and some fled. And the Bible says that the Israelites trembled with fear. Now, during this time, the king will consult with the priest or the prophet who will get directions from God. And so we look at um, 1 Samuel chapter 13. Saul was supposed to wait on um, Samuel. But Samuel, but Saul became impatient. And sometimes being impatient can cause us to make the wrong decisions. That's right. Amen. And we tend to get out of our lanes and start operating out of our calling. So Saul waited for seven days, the set time that Samuel said he was coming. But Samuel didn't show up, and the soldiers were slipping away right and left. So Saul took charge, and he said, Bring me the burnt offering up and the peace offering. And he went ahead and sacrificed the burnt offering. No sooner than he did it, Samuel showed up and Saul greeted him. Samuel said, what on earth are you doing? And Saul said, well, when I saw was losing my army from under me, and that you hadn't come when you said you were going to come, the Philistines was poised at Mishka. And I said, this is what he said. He said, the Philistines are about to come down on me and Gilgad, and I haven't yet come before God asking for his help. So I took things in my own hands and sacrificed the burnt offering. So Samuel said that was a foolish thing to do. He said, now, if you had kept the Lord's commandment and did what he told you to do, he said, your, your kingdomship We'll be crumbling right about now. He said, in fact, he said, God is looking for your replacement right now. He said, this time, God is going to do the choosing. Because before, even though God is in control of all things, but he allowed the children of Israel, uh, Israelites to choose Saul as the king. But this time, God is going to do the choosing. But Saul went on to have great military success. He went on to do great exploits and conquered all the nations that rose up against him. But you know that old saying, the straw that broke the camel's back. Sylvia had a word from the Lord. See, God never forgets folk that mess with his people. Amen. He never forgets the ones that bother us, irritate us, harass us. 
accuser. You don't forget them. Amen. Remember when God had delivered the children of Israel from Egypt, the Amalekites tried to destroy them. So God told Samuel what he wanted Saul to do. He gave specific instructions. Samuel told Saul exactly what the Lord had said. He said, now go and smite the Amalekites and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. He said, slay both man and woman, infant and children, ox and sheep, camel and everything. But you know, Saul thought that uh, he knew best. And he failed again to do what God had required him to do. And this time, God had already anointed David. That day when Saul disobeyed, his kingdom, the kingdom of Israel was rent from him. And for many days, the Bible said that Samuel mourned for Saul. Even though Saul asked for forgiveness, he still lost. But God told Samuel, he said, you have mourned long enough. He said, I need you to go to Bethlehem and find Jesse. He said, I have selected one of his sons to be king. And I love how God selected David. Yes. It was because of David's heart. Yes. Yes. You see, what we like to do, we like to look at the people out of appearance. Yes. Yes. <laughs> how they dress the house they live in, the type of car, how eloquent they can speak, yes. the title in front of their name, their bank account, yes. how they can break the word down. But what is in their hearts? Thank you. Luke 6 and 45 says, the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. So God chose David, a man out of his own heart. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse um, 13, that um, the spirit, when, when, when Saul, Samuel had anointed David, it says, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. And then it says in verse, uh, it says that now the spirit of the Lord left Saul. And the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. But his men knew about David. David was a skilled harp player. And he, the music that he played, it was soothed <laughs> Saul, tormenting spirit. So he became Saul's armor bearer. And Saul, the Bible says Saul loved him at one point. <laughs> so when we get to the, the nitty gritty of the whole deal, how David ended up in the cave of Adullam, David was going back and forth from taking care of Saul because, and his father because the three oldest sons were in battle with, um, with Israelite against the Philistines. So one day, David's daddy said, hey, I need you to go and take some food to the sons and come back and tell me what they're doing. But when David get to the battleground, he began to notice um, this big nine-foot giant. He was taunting the Israelites. And he kept taunting and bragging how he's a Philistine champion. They only had little servants. At the end of the day, it didn't take much. Because any time you go in the name of the Lord, it don't take very much. Amen. When you go in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. And he went in the name of Jesus. He told the giant Goliath, he said, you come to me with a sword and spear and a javelin. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what he said. He said, today, he would, look, look David, 
He was so powerful. He said, today, <laughs> he said, the Lord will conquer you. Yes. He said, but I'll kill you and cut your head off. But the Lord is going to conquer you today. Yes, Lord. He said, everyone assembled here would know that the Lord rescued his people. And it was not, it's not going to be no sword. It's not going to be with a spear. Yes, Lord. But this is the Lord's battle. Yes, and what does he do? He flew the light and cut his head off. And when you begin to look at it, Saul became angry. He became so much angry because the women, they said after David killed Goliath, King Saul could not get over his jealousy of David when he heard the women singing. Saul had slain a thousand, but David ten thousand. And the seed, of, um, the seed of murderous envy was planted in Saul's heart that day. And it did not take long before it sprang up. Listen, um, we can sow a seed and don't know. We don't know it because we're in a blind rage. Yeah. But it will spring up. Because whenever you water, wherever you water, you're going to see it grow. So how did it, how did this anger build up in him? He watered with his behavior. So anytime you repeat this behavior, you actually watering the seed. So soon after, while David was playing the harp, and an evil spirit came upon Saul, he Saul picked up his spear and threw it at David to pin him to the wall. When the evidence became indisputable that Saul was determined to put David to death, Saul's son Jonathan secretly warned David to flee for his life. In response, David made a risky decision. He fled to Gath, one of the five main cities of the Philistines. So here we see in 1 Samuel chapter 21, it says, So David escaped from Saul and went to King Achish, a Gath. Now you've got to remember that the Philistines, well, Gath is one of the cities of the Philistines. And you've got to remember that the Philistines and the Israelites have been at war. And here David is going to the Philistines, <laughs> to, to the enemy. And I think the pastor was saying something about this, how uh, we're talking about in the flesh. How can a king go to a, another kingdom and try to seek refuge, give orders? It ain't gonna work. So he tried to seek, he tried to seek um, safety in the enemy's camp. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But the officers of Achaz, they weren't too happy about him being there. Right. They said, isn't this David the king? Right. Now, they already done claimed him to be the king. The enemy has already claimed right. David to right. be the king. <laughs> they asked, isn't this the one the people were honoring and they're dancing, singing? Saul has killed his thousand and David his ten thousand. But when David heard these comments, he became very afraid of the king, what he might do to him. And so he pretended to be crazy. Amen. <laughs> he started scratching at the door and the slobber everywhere. And see, back then, they didn't deal with crazy people. Uh -huh. They said, hey, you can act crazy all you want, but you ain't coming over here. <laughs> the king said, <laughs> this is what the king said to his men. He said, must you bring me a madman? We already have enough of them around here. Why should I let someone like this be my guest? So David left Gath, when in 1 Samuel chapter 22, and he escaped to the cave of Adullam. And this cave is where David spent most of his time hiding from Saul. His brothers and all the relatives, other relatives joined him. And this was time for David to reflect on the things that God had done for him. 
not only was he reflecting, but he was actually encouraging men that came. Verse 22 of chapter, uh, verse, um, chapter 22, verse 2 of 1 Samuel. It said, then other men, others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt, or who were just discontent. In other words, they were stressed out. They were depressed. They ain't prosper under Saul's kingship. In fact, <laughs> Saul's leadership made them bitter and discontent. So David encouraged these men. Everybody will not receive encouragement. One of the reasons why folks, a lot of people don't receive encouragement because they, they thrive on the drama. Yes. Amen. And they like to have the attention all on them. And they love the pity part of saga. So whatever these folks are going through, that want to have like the, the pity party, no matter what you say, they always gonna have something the opposite. They gonna counteract what you say. You 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 you're teaching now. <laughs> Folks must want to be encouraged. Yeah. See, these men found David in a cave. Mm -hmm. David was on the run for his life. If anything, these 400 men that found David in the cave, they should have run the opposite way because if the king would have found them, all of them would have been killed. Right. Now, let me say this. Sometimes God will allow folk to be drawn to us so that we can encourage them. Yeah, that's right. And if you read on, some of these same men that David encouraged, yeah. they became um, his uh, mighty men of valor. Right. Yeah, amen. That's right. They became that's mighty right. men of valor. Yeah. That's right. And so when we look at Psalms 34, it's a song of uh, David regarding the time he pretended to be insane in front of uh, Abimelech. And it says, the first scripture says, 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, when we look at the word bless, we can, we can, I know it's used in the Hebrew, but it, 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 you can um, use it either way, Hebrew or the Greek. And when you look at the Greek side of uh, bless, it means eulogy. That's what we get, you know, for a funeral, you know, how you eulogize somebody. And you, you, you know, I know we go and we have funerals and, and people be preaching, preaching, preaching. There's nothing wrong with preaching. But what eulogy is, you speak well of somebody. That's you know right. what it is. Amen. It's a speech and praise of some personal thing. It is a high praise. It is a public expression of approval or praise, period, to lavish praise upon. Some of the synonyms for blessed is to celebrate, uh -huh. to eulogize, to extol, to praise, to loud, yeah. to exhort, to glorify, to magnify, to honor. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, by blessing God, we give him honor for his grace towards us. Yeah. It is a declaration of trust and the greatest hope for him to reign over our circumstances. God is good, and we are dependent on his goodness. And when you think about it, blessing means an increase. When we bless God, it is his presence that increases in us. When we honor him, we acknowledge how he is increasing the goodness in our lives. And in order to live fully, we are dependent on his presence. Yes, we are. But see, David had his mind made up that he was going to bless the Lord. And in fact, he made a lifetime commitment. And if you know anything about David, he is a praiser. Yes. If you read the scripture, he danced before the Lord with all his might. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Yes. See, David is not going to wait for God to do something for him. He has a made up mind. He's going to bless the Lord in spite of. David had a personal testimony. He may have acted. 
acted like a fool or a madman, but he knew it was God who saved him from the Philistines. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. He said, my soul shall make his boast in the Lord. He ain't going to boast in himself because he made a fool of himself. But he's going to give all the glory, the credit to God. He's going to give all the credit to God for saving him from the Philistines. Yes. And we just went over how when, when he went before Goliath, he said, no, no, no. He said, it's the Lord. Lord, God, God's going to do this. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah, he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. But he said, the Lord will conquer you. He taught the, I like what Prophet Campbell said, he taught the glory back to God. Yes. Yeah. He blessing God. Yeah. David had a personal experience of the power of God. What he had been through, David knows that God is a good God. We talk about the lion and the bear. He tried to devour his, his father's sheep, but David knew it was God who protected him. Yeah. Yeah. And in spite of David's adverse situation, he knew to still give God the praise. Yeah. And if you read David's life story, he had some serious issues. His son rose up, his son Absalom rose up against him. Yeah. Then he had a son that raised his daughter Tamar. Uh -huh. But David still had a mind to bless the Lord. Yeah. And we must understand that God dwells in the midst of his praise. Yeah. When we look at Psalm 23 and 22 and 3, it says, But thou art holy, O thy habitants, the praises of Israel. In other words, he inhabits the praises of his people. When he said inhabit, that means he sat down. Yeah. He resides. He stayed. He remained. He's not going anywhere. As long as you're giving him praise, he inhabits the praises of his people. Yeah. My God. Yeah. David so he made the decree. He said, I'm going to bless him at all times. Uh -huh. I don't know about you. If that's what I tell I will bless him at all times. I can remember, I can remember, you know, how you be driving along sometimes, and you don't want nobody to think you're crazy. And so you may be driving along, people be passing by you, you know. So one day I came to my senses. I said, now, you ride past me all this loud music, and I'm sitting in my car listening to my music like, yeah. but now I turn it up, I'll be singing, you can, you can look at me crazy all you want to, but I am going to glorify God. We got to magnify. We got to give him the praise. In the growth, look, look, this is, when I go to the VA, I like going to the VA too often, right? Because you can't find a parking space. But when I go to the VA, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Glory. Just start praying. Yeah, I need a parking space, Lord. <laughs> I know sometimes we think stuff is just, uh, just petty. But when it comes to things of God, I don't think nothing is petty. Because he said, I have not because I ask not. So I'm going to ask him and watch him work or work in my life so I can continue to give him the praise. So in essence, David is saying to us, we should bless the Lord in the good times, in the bad times, when we up, when we down, when we're in the valley, when we're on the mountain, when it's good, when it's bad, when you're broke, when you got money in the bank, when you're sick, when you're well, we should always bless the Lord. Yes. I know every time you hear me pray, you probably get tired of, oh, lady, yeah, she's over there praying again. Listen, when we get up in the morning time, thank you, Jesus. Lord God, I praise you. I praise you for allowing me to see another day. God, I praise you. I have the activities of my lips. God, I praise you. I'm in my right mind. God, I praise you. Oh, God, I, I can watch my own faith. God, I praise you. I can put one foot in front of the other. I praise you. I still got a roof over my head. God, I praise you. There is food on the table. God, I praise you. The bills are paid. God, I praise you for the peace. We just got to give God the praise. We got to give him the praise. Yes. He in the habit. He sits right there. What well, long as you promise, to stay right. Uh -huh. Keep on praising me, daughter, hallelujah. and I'm gonna keep on learning to praise. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. David is encouraged to bless the Lord at all times mm -hmm. because God is worthy of all the praise. Yes. And listen, we will face adversity, trouble, but we must bless the Lord. 
and to offer praise unto the Lord in the midst of difficulty. It sends a message to the enemy that nothing can take the praise out of our mouth. All right. Amen. And it's because we have a faith in his word that all things work together for our good. And praise is a sacrifice. That's what we said. We bring the sacrifice in the, well, we bring the sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice. Psalms 54 and 6 said, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible goes on to say that the humble shall hear thereof. And when we translate humble, it means, in this context, it means depressed, lowly, meek. It's the same men that came to see David. They were distressed. They were discontented. They were in debt. But when we begin to bless the Lord, when we begin to speak well of God, what he has done for us, folks will hear it and be glad. Because they'll know if he did it for you, he's going to do it for me. Blessing the Lord from our mouth, speaking well of God, gives people hope. And people be glad to hear how God is blessing. So David, when we get to verse 4, David's given an invitation. And the invitation is, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together, the glory. And when you look at the word magnify, it means to promote, make bigger. Yeah. Greater to exceed. The other night I was helping um, the pastor with some numbers he was putting into the system. And I couldn't see the numbers. So I had to get his, a magnifying glass to see. And when, I, and, when I, and when I did put the magnifying glass on the paper, the numbers didn't change. They were small. But when I put the magnifying glass there, I was able to see. The numbers did not get bigger. But because of perception, I was able to see. What am I saying? Just because we magnify God, God does not change. He's still a healer. He's still a protector. He's still a comforter. He's still a counselor. He's still a way out of no way. And we should see him bigger. We should see God bigger than cancer, bigger than COVID, bigger than our finances, bigger than our marital problem, bigger than our children issues. We should magnify the Lord. And any time you magnify, so you make it bigger. Stop doing this pity party stuff and give God the glory that's doing to his name. Yes. Magnify him. You magnify, make him bigger in your life, the problem you have, oh, that's a problem right there. Oh, man, that's just, oh. Uh. But we just have to magnify. So David is encouraging these 400 men that's in the cave with him. Yes. He said, magnify the Lord. Magnify, he's bigger than your problem. Yes, he's bigger than your issue. Whatever you got going, he's bigger. Yes. Just magnify. Yes, and let us exalt his name together. Yes. And David said, I sought the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he heard me. He delivered me from all of my fears. And sought me. David had to do something. Sought means to inquire, to search. He had to ask. Yes. So listen, when we do what we're supposed to do, God will respond. He said, and it shall come to pass before they call. He said, I'll answer. He said, while they're yet speaking, I've already heard. God delivered David from all of his fears. And he'd do the same for us. God would not abandon us. He would never leave us nor forsake us. But we must seek the Lord. And what a blessing it is to receive a word from the Lord in a time of fear and confusion and in doubt. When we are fearful, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and alone and not know what to do. But one word from the Lord can dispel all doubt and fear. 
And when we are afraid, we must give ourselves to prayer and ask God to silence all those other noises, the voices, as we can hear him clear. And his word may come from another human being, like a prophet. And it's just for David and um, when David, uh, in uh, chapter, in our lesson text, it says, verse 5, and it says that one day the prophet Gad, he told David, he said, leave the stronghold and return to the land of Judah. Get, get away from the depression yeah. and go back to the land of praise. Go back to the things that you are familiar with. The land of praise, giving God the praise. Continue to bless God. Yeah. But we have to position ourselves yeah. to hear from him. We have to position ourselves to seek him. And that's what he wants. Because yeah. David sought him. And when David sought him, God heard him and delivered him. Mm -hmm. Look at that. We just do one thing, he do two things. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Well, you, 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 you repent, we baptize, somebody else will baptize you, you receive to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. You do one thing, we do two. Somebody else do two. Look at God. Amen. That's my God. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. That's my God. So we look at verse 5. They went from they, he went to they. He said they looked to him. He was doing all this I, 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 I. But now he said they looked to him. In other words, when they looked to him, they considered God. They trusted God, and they were radiant. And any time you trust God, let me tell you something. It's something about when God brings a revelation word to you or give you a word that you nobody knows that you're going through, but God just comes and sends somebody your way and tell you what God said this. It does something to you. Amen. There's a radiance to you. There's a glory of the Lord on you because you're excited from the inside. And that's what will cause you to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will continue to be in your mouth. He said, the faces were not ashamed. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. He said, trust in me. I ain't going to make you be ashamed. You just trust. Take me at my word. I promise you. Just take me at my word. And the Bible goes on and says, this poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. David emphasized his personal spirit. He was a poor man. He was depressed. He cried out to God. And God graciously answered him. Yeah. Then this, I like this. Say, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. Yeah. David found himself between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> On this side over here, he, you know, he should have been a part of Israel with, with, uh, with the king over here, but the king over here was out to kill him. Uh -huh. And then you got the king over here in Philistine, don't want nothing to do with him, don't play crazy. Amen. So he's stuck between a rock and a, what, a hard place. But I want you to know that the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. And even though David could not see God's divine protection, David trusted in God. Listen, the enemy does not take a day off. That's right. Amen. Yeah. The Bible said the devil is, is like a roaring lion, walking and seeking whom he may devour. See, he has to seek who he wants to devour because he can't devour everybody. Amen. But thank God we have a greater present tense reality that the angels of the Lord are encamped around about us. So David, he may have been caught between Two ugly rocks, but David trusts in the rock of his salvation. Yeah. Yeah, glory. Yeah, call that glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. My God. David offers another invitation. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, after David was telling about his experience, he wants us to experience God's goodness for ourselves. Uh-huh. And we can only taste and see through a personal encounter with God. Amen. Uh -huh. So when you look at the word taste and see, there are pretty much the senses, physical senses, ways in which we interact with the material world. And in some ways, faith is like a spiritual sense. And with it, we interact with the spiritual world. And so to taste and to see are like trusting God. 
like loving him, like seeking him, and looking to him. And when you look at the word taste, it means we need to consider it seriously, yeah. affectionately, yeah. thoroughly. Uh -huh. Taste and see. Yeah. Have your personal spirits with God. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you, when you taste and see that he is good, yeah. that's enough to bless his name. That's enough to exalt him. That's enough to magnify him. Yes. Yes. Amen. So taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. So what you must do is taste. Taste me. you got trying, proving. And what you're going to see, what you're looking for, you're going to look that God is good. Yes. And the reward for the test, the taste test, it's blessed the man that trusted in God. God going to bless you. And as we talked about earlier, bless me an increase. Amen? Amen. He said, oh, fear the Lord, you and his saints. And this fear is proper reverence and respect to God. Those who seek the Lord should not like any good thing. That even as one as even one as strong as a young lion may like and suffer hunger. But David testified of God's greater provision. David experienced a good thing from God in his deliverance among the Philistines. He knew that the good thing was not due to his own strength or might. It was the goodness of God that extended to those who seek him. So David goes on, we get to verse 11. He starts teaching the people, teaching the men. He said, come on, children, listen to me. Just, just come on and, and, and just listen to me. So see, now he's trying to encourage them, build their faith up. And so as David describes the fear of the Lord, he said, it's just, it's just doing the right thing. It involves just being obedient. Do what God tells you to do. He said, who is the man who desires life? David is teaching these men that they that are with him that if you desire God's blessing on your life, you got to live in the fear of of the Lord. You got to reverence the Lord. You got to respect the Lord. You got to obey the God. You got to do everything, live a holy and righteous lifestyle before Him. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Then He told him, He said, He said, Keep your tongue from evil now. Yeah. Amen. He said, don't, 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 don't speak evil now. Uh -huh. and he said, And your lips from speaking deceit. I always say deceit was a dressed up lie. Yeah. And he told them, he said, keep your lips from speaking deceit. In other words, you're perpetrating a fraud. Right. He said, depart from evil and do good. He said, seek peace and pursue it. Yeah, yeah. God. Now, if anybody know about seeking peace and pursue it, it's they. Yeah. Because all that time, Saul was trying to take his life. Mm -hmm. He had every opportunity to take Saul's life. Right. The Bible says, seek peace. And pursue it. He said, as much as it lies in you, live peace with all men. Yeah. And sometimes folks will try to kill us and take us out. Yeah. But God says, seek peace and pursue it. Yeah. People are going to talk about us. God says, seek peace and pursue it. People are going to intentionally do something that try to rub your feathers. Yeah. But God says, seek peace and pursue it. Hey, go let that old shot go. Yeah, people are going to disrespect you. We don't have to be disrespectful. Right. Seek peace and pursue it. When we get to verse 15, God let David let them know that we're living under a watch for our God. He said, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. You know, the Bible said God's eyes are everywhere, beholding the good and the evil. But David was encouraging them and said, listen, when you're righteous, God got his eyes on you. You are the apple of God's eye. It would just be righteous. Amen. And he said, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So that's why we ain't got to take care of the evil ones, the people that come up against us. We ain't got to take care of them. Amen. Just, they just, yeah, they, one of them, they could be one of them. You say, cash, cash your care. I'm, Lord, I'm a cash your own. There you go, Lord. Take it. <laughs> we don't have to. Because the faith of the Lord is against those who do what? Evil. And it, um, verse 17 says, The righteous cry out 
and the Lord hears. Now, I'm going to say this. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears. The righteous cry out. And you know God looks at the heart. Now, see, a lot of people, saints, you know, saints. Let me tell you something. You, you're not going to tell me when people are going through all the time. Uh -huh. You're going to tell me that you cried out before God. The righteous cried out before God. God hear. Now, if you continue in the same predicament over and over again, something ain't right. Because the Bible says the righteous cry out, the Lord hears. Yeah. And when God hears us cry, he attends to our cry. So a lot of, a lot of saints, you know, see, saints are going through the same thing over and over again. And you be like, <laughs> you try to like scratch your head like, um, uh, you don't want to be disrespectful or rude, but you can't tell me if the word of God says this, and you still over here, what's the problem? So he said, the righteous cry and the Lord hears. David reminded his men at the cave that God's attentive care is upon the righteous. David's testimony was that God had delivered him out of all his troubles. Yeah. And he said, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Yeah. A broken heart. We always say, Lord, fix my heart. But he said, I'm near to the one who got a broken heart. He, he's near to the ones who have a broken heart. And here we got men in the cave who were distressed. They were stressed out. They were depressed, discontent. They're the ones who would like to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And they were objects of God's favor and salvation, not his scorn. Broken heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A contrite spirit. Uh -huh. A beaten out spirit. Yeah. A hammered out spirit. Mm -hmm. Ready into pieces. But God is near. Yeah. You feel like your heart is broken? God is near. Yeah. That's his word. He's near. Yeah. Yeah. He's near. Let me tell you why he, yeah. he's near. He's going to hear our cry. He's going to hear our call. Because he wants us to bless his name. Yeah. He wants us to magnify him. He wants us to give him praise so he can dwell in the midst of his people. Because we were created to praise God. Thank you. It says, I love this one now. Yeah, glory. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. My God. Yeah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. God ain't never said we're going to be sugar free now. He ain't never said every day gonna be sunshine and rain. But one thing he did say, if we suffer, he's gonna rain. We're gonna rain. When we look at the word affliction, it means hurt, bad, trouble, heaviness, calamities, suffering, persecutions. Now there are many blessings in living for God. And of course, but God does not promise to keep us from afflictions. And we have many afflictions in this life. But even when we go through our affliction, just know that if we suffer, just hold on. If you suffer with him, just know that you're going to reign. That should be enough to give God some praise. You ought to think about this. If you never go through anything, whose side are you standing on? When God said you're supposed to suffer, if you never suffer, whose side are you on? Amen. God wants the glory out of our lives. We never go through anything. We can never appreciate anything. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When we go through affliction, God is making us, molding us. And he will not put no more on us than we can bear. Y'all remember the story of Job? Yes, man. When Satan came with the brethren, Satan didn't mention Job's name. God did. Hey, have you considered my servant Job? And he came, he left, then we had to came back. He said, if you consider my son Job, say that, say that not. Come say, hey, okay, can I have Job? I, I, I want to try and test Job. No, God put his name out there. 
But listen, God can put our name out there too. But guess what? There's a hedge around us. Yeah. He told, he told, he told Sam, he said, don't kid him, don't, don't kid him now. Do whatever you want to do, but don't you kid him. And we go through stuff sometimes in life. We, oh, this is killing me. It ain't killing you, it's making you. And then when you go, and the Bible says, you go through the fire, you don't get burned. You go through the water, the water ain't going to overtake you. So we have to go through some things. In order for God, for us to give God the praise. Amen. Amen. Now people think you're crazy. When, when God, you know, when God do something for you, you be like, and nobody gonna believe you now. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me anymore. I used to care about that kind of stuff, but it don't bother me no more. Because when I know what God said, yeah, yeah. and you come with something different, no, bro, <laughs> you can't do that. And I'm gonna be nice, but you can't tell me. When God does things, we got to give him praise. And the more we praise him, yeah, the more he'll sit right there and say, here, there you go. I'll be something. There you go. Because he's standing right. He said, I am he said, I have the praise of the people. That means when he have, he set, he remains, he settles, he's right there, he's abiding, aboding right here. Every time you give him a praise. And the more you praise him, the more you bless his name, the more he's going to give you something to praise him for. The more he's going to give you something to bless him for. My God, the emotion level will go shut down. My God. But he says, many are the affliction of the righteous. Now, y'all know I don't like that word, but. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. I don't care what you go through, God will deliver. Yes, he will. Now, we try to deliver ourselves sometimes. You know, we'll throw in the towel real quick. We'll jump ship real quick. But you got to wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It's God who will deliver. And when he delivers, he knows how to do it big time. He'll put you on the front street. Hey, this is what I did for her. So he can... Get the glory. So just like David sat in the cave and was telling them all the goodness of God, that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Encouraging one another and blessing God, speaking well of him, giving him the praise, and let people know there is hope in God. Yeah. How in the world are you going to try to witness to somebody, and every time they see you, you got a sad story? Uh-huh. You know, when they turn the lights off, you know, you know, my children acting up, you know. No, 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 no. It's good script. Look at here. My life will turn off, but I know God. He's going to turn them back home. Watch this. I'm going to come back to you next week and let you know how God did it. Next week, rolling around, you know what? God turned those lights back on. I ain't had no money in the bank, but he did it. Amen. We got to learn. We got to be wise as a servant, home as a dog. We got to encourage people. By blessing God, by giving God praise. Yeah. That's what David did. David made men of valor. That's right. And we bless God and praise God and, and, and represent God like he's doing something for us. God don't give us him down. Yeah. He gives us new mercy every morning. Amen. Thank Nobody you. can mess it up but you right. and me. He gives us new mercy every morning. Yes, Lord. And that's exactly what, that's enough to give him praise. Yeah. He didn't give us no leftovers. Thank you, Jesus. And we should say, Lord God, I thank you for new mercies. Yeah. Lord, I thank you. Yes, yes. I thank you. Mm. Thank you, thank you. God said, none of those who trust him shall be condemned. Trust God. Trust in him. David had a determined mind, a made up mind. Despite what situations, circumstances he was faced with, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And if we don't get nothing out of the lesson tonight, learn to bless the Lord. Yeah. Learn to give him some praise. Yeah. If the taste and see, try him. Take him at his word. You need something. You need something. I, I, I never forget. And I still got it in my Bible. 
Um, this was made in 1990. It was like 1997, 98. First Lady Haiti Fred Apostolic. We had a women's ministry meeting. And she said, write down something that you want God to do for you. I was bold. Hey. I wrote down that yellow piece of sticky paper. I still got it to this day. That was in 1997, something like that. I wrote down a four bedroom house, two full baths, big backyard, big front yard, two car garage. I trusted God. I believed God. Within a year, we had them build that house. Because I believed God. And for that, I was able to give God praise. And you know, let me tell you something. We overcome by each other testimony. We got to learn to trust God. So we can give him praise for court. So we can bless his name for all the things he can do for us. Amen? I'm going to read this. This is in our, um, in our book. And it says, this is my closing. It says, praising and blessing God in affliction can be terribly difficult. But only in doing this will we taste and see that God is indeed good, even in affliction. And he does bless and deliver those who trust him. When we have experienced this ourselves, then God can powerfully use us to come along those who are suffering and speak a word of encouragement to them, telling them, praise him, seek him, and he will hear you and deliver you from all of your fears. Thank God for the lesson. I will bless the Lord at all times. God bless you. Thank you.